Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm from Indie Games, back playing Seduce Me. We are getting back in once more into the fray. What page am I on here? It looks like this one. October 15th? Yep. I let out a sigh before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning that the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. Oh, I remember. Huh? Whose limo is that? Hmm? Oh, that must be Lewis's car. Lewis? I'll go get him. Stay with your father so you can escort your guests out together. My guests? Yes, Mom. My mother left my dad and me to slowly escort the guests out. My dad held his simple smile as he thanked each person for coming. I did the same. Andrew quickly passed the doors before I could speak. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, my parents, and the Incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Huh. I don't buy it. Oh, oh. Thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Oh, right. All right, your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Uh, oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? Right, see ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. All four of my remaining guests left the building, all but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Phew, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Give her a break, man! She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Ugh! Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. Oh no. I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads toward the doors, finally panning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I never would have, have, would have never expected to see. Okay. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine. Roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hand. I saw a monster. I covered my mouth to not scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck, and he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of... All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. No, Sam! We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his son at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding farther away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. 
However, I look to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Malix's face grew hot, grew to that of extreme ang anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Get out of my house. Malix growled at me, walking right up to me and leaning close to my face. I glared back, feeling my courage skyrocket. Since when does a little stain like you give orders to a guy who can rip your pretty little head from your body? You really don't think, do you? If you killed me, you'd be hunted down by more than just the police. You little... What? <laughs> what? All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back, forcing me to cry out and stare up at Malik's. His eyes bored into mine as he cackled in my face. Hey, let her go! Sam, Eric! Within mere seconds, Sam had punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to let my hair go. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik's back in their group. <sighs> Come on, Sam. You and me, right here. Let's go! Come on, asswipe! However, before both of them could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malix's shoulder. That's enough, Malix. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? I stared at th as the girl spoke down at Malix. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malix. Or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. Then... We shoot everyone! Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. <sighs> the two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from under their teeth. Malik grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malix left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know, as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. I wonder if that's a reference to, like, I think it's called Dante's Infernal, was the seven, seven, uh, circles of hell? I don't know, I ha it's been a long time. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. You jumped me, though. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. 
This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed and I happened to land in the middle of it. What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now. Until then, oh, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. But what about going outside? Won't he? Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the incubi, I felt like a target to something I'd never be able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this all even happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? They are only staying until after they defeat Malix. That's right, they said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. After that, my life could go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kay would say. The question was then, would I want them to leave? If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with it tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m.? Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to get back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? I am going to... explore the house. I decided it was a good idea to wander around the house. I never really explored it much as a child, so there were bound to be new surprises. Well, come on, feet. Let's go on an adventure. Um... I think I'm gonna have to cut it there because I have a feeling this next part's gonna be kind of long and I don't want this episode to get too long. So I'm going to save uh, page three. All right, so I'm gonna save there and I'm gonna call it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I I was kind of freaked out. Like, Malix's voice is like kind of terrifying. I mean, like, it's not like super scary, but I don't know, it's very effective. I was genuinely worried there. Um, so I'm super excited to keep playing this game, and I hope you are super excited to keep watching it. So I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a good one. Bye!